Uh, good morning, and thank you for that uh, kind uh, introduction. Um, I, what I thought I would do today is to give to you, all of you, uh, if you like, uh, an overview of the challenges that our uh, health service faces over the next five years, um, and uh, the need to make sure that every penny that is available goes to the front line of patient care, which is something I know that we would all uh, believe in. Now, there was, um, for this parliament, put in place by the then chief executive of the NHS, Sir David Nicholson, uh, what, we, what became referred to as the Nicholson Challenge, which was that even though spending in the NHS uh, was in real terms increasing, that there was a 4% efficiency challenge every year, which meant that over the course of five years, we would have to save £20 billion, pounds, that's about £4 billion pounds each and every year, so that money can then be reinvested in frontline patient care. And that was about delivering improvements in efficiencies, making sure that more money was freed up um, from uh, reducing waste, uh, improving procurement, uh, making sure that the way we run uh, our back office affairs uh, was done in a way uh, that freed up that money for care. Part of that challenge is also going to be met by radically transforming the way that we deliver care, better joining up what happens in primary care, community care, and the secondary care sector. Um, that challenge is one that we have met um, over the last few years, um, and we have freed up those efficiencies and delivered those efficiency savings and ploughed that money into the front line. That's a great credit to our NHS and all those people um, who have contributed towards delivering those efficiency savings and improvements. Um, but there is also uh, now another challenge looking forward in the next few years that was outlined uh, very effectively by uh, Simon Stevens, uh, the head of NHS England, in his five-year forward plan, that we do need to continue to improve the way we deliver care, transform the way we deliver service services, and deliver services in a more efficient and effective way. The main driver for that, as we all know, is the fact that we have uh, an ageing population, a population where by 2018 we will have over three million people with three long-term conditions. That's a very big human challenge to look after those people. Uh, it's a very big challenge for our health and care system. It requires much more joined up integration between uh, what happens in the community, what happens in social care, and what happens uh, in the hospital. Um, but it also means that we must uh, make sure um, that we continue to deliver those efficiencies uh, and direct as much money to the front line as we possibly can. So today is about talking about and offering some opportunities about how to do exactly that. Um, I'm very pleased that uh, Cloudby are uh, involved today in sponsoring uh, the event because they've done a lot of very good work in the uh, sphere of social care, supporting local authorities to deliver uh, improvements in procurement practice and efficiencies. And what I wanted to talk about uh, was a little bit about the work we've already done to uh, help support better procurement, uh, and then secondly, about uh, how we can take things further forward in the years ahead. Of course, efficiencies and improving the efficiency of how our health service run is also about better estate management, reducing the overhead of our non-clinical estate, finding synergies in the estate between uh, different parts of the health sector, different parts of the health and care sector, and indeed across local government. Of course, it's about um, uh, driving uh, improvements in the way that we structure our organisations, where possible sharing uh, business services uh, across different parts uh, of the health service and making sure that where we can collaborate to save costs in our back office functions, perhaps HR uh, and other uh, business functions, that we do that. But procurement is the one area where we can certainly go further. Now, I'm very pleased to say that since we launched uh, a year ago uh, a drive to improve hospital procurement, that against projected trend, we saved almost £250 million, pounds, and that's a very big uh, achievement. Um, but there's a lot further we need to go, and I think we could be looking at possibly a billion pounds worth of savings um, across the health sector uh, just on uh, imp improvements in procurement practice in the provider sector alone. The overall spend uh, is something like 22 billion in uh, the provider sector on goods and services. Um, the uh, first step that we took um, was to make sure there is greater, there needs to be greater transparency in what the spend is uh, by hospital. And in the NHS standard contract now, as many of you will be aware, 
there is in the provider contract uh, a transparency clause that all providers have to now publish what they pay for common goods and services and on what they spend. And I think that is something that is going to allow comparison um, between um, hospitals that are side by side on a regional level, on a national level, um, to look at um, what perhaps, say, the Norfolk and Norwich is spending as opposed to Ipswich Hospital on exactly the same uh, goods and services. What is one hospital saving, uh, paying for syringes compared to another? Uh, what different manufacturers and, provide, uh, and uh, suppliers can offer? Uh, and uh, clearly, greater transparency in the system will help uh, those people making decisions about procurement uh, in trusts to make those decisions more wisely. But um, the other step forward, of course, is not just about having transparency. It's also about encouraging um, hospitals and uh, trusts to do this better and uh, there is a lot of uh, support out there now, good support that's available from companies uh, like the one who's sponsoring, like Cloudby who's sponsoring the event today, um, who can provide support to um, trusts and healthcare organisations um, to look at um, where procurement practices can be improved. The key to that of course is having the data to underpin it. If you've got the right data to understand uh, where your spend is going, then of course that means you're then in a better, much better place uh, to understand where you can make savings uh, and where you can make the efficiency of how perhaps the uh, goods pass through your hospital, uh, where the waste in the system may be, uh, and help your uh, organisations to save money and free up that money for frontline patient care. So this is not, if you like, um, a nice to do anymore. It's something that we, we expect all hospitals and trusts to do. There is support out there um, to help you to achieve this. Um, many people in this room may also be aware of the new Section 42 guidance for uh, trusts and, and uh, hospitals which um, are um, uh, uh, asking uh, for government financial support. A key component of that um, guidance um, that's been given that is that when we give financial support to trusts that are in difficulty, we will now expect, not ask for, but expect best practice in procurement, best practice in estate management, and best practice in reducing temporary staffing and other unnecessary costs at the trust. So this is something that um, everybody uh, has a duty to uh, make sure they take seriously because it's about freeing up money for frontline patient care but it's also something that there's going to be much stronger a steer centrally to ensure that those organisations who do want money in future have to make sure that they are um, doing their very best to ensure every penny goes to patients. Now, finally, um, I wanted to, um, in outlining some of the steps we've taken and the challenge, I wanted to talk very briefly uh, about other opportunities because we all know that the opportunities um, through um, technology, improving technology, is part of uh, delivering efficiencies in our health system. It's also about improving the way that we can care for patients. If we have uh, the right data, that's about improving patient care, but also improving procurement data and getting our procurement practices right also mean um, that we are able to use the right um, equipment, the right uh, goods and services in order to support clinicians in delivering high quality care. Um, so this is not just uh, an exercise in finances, it's also something that also can help us to make sure that we're buying the right things to deliver the best care for patients. Um, I'm not going to say a lot more on the technology side because you've got Tim Kelsey here from NHS England who will talk to you about that in greater detail. Um, but this is something that we all have to do if we want to meet that challenge uh, of making sure that every penny counts, every penny goes to the front line, if we want to make sure that we can better look after those three million people by 2018 who have three or more long-term conditions, we need to make sure that our, our, the funding that goes to our NHS does go to patients. Um, and the key to that is making sure that we all take our responsibilities for having a more efficient health service that delivers uh, care in a more efficient way and makes that money go to the front line. Um, that's, that's the priority and the challenge that we all have uh, and one that I know that you all here want to deliver. So the opportunities are there. Uh, it's not, as I say, a nice to do anymore. It's something we have to do. It's very clearly outlined as well in the NHS England five-year plan that improving the efficiency of our services is not just about money, it's about delivering better care to patients. That's something we all believe in. That's why we're all here and why we all care about our health service and we all want to be a part of it. So 
I hope that together we will continue to deliver that challenge. I hope you find um, the speeches and the event today useful and helpful uh, in uh, taking back to your organisations uh, some of the ways that we can deliver better procurement. And there are organisations out there like Cloudby who have a track record of doing this in social care and, and who can be of great help potentially to the NHS in the future um, in making sure that every penny that we do have does go to the front line of patient care. Thank you very much.